have hybrid financing. Iba na pala. Iba na pala. Actually, they... Air... 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 Hi guys, welcome back. So, we are going to proceed to the second session of hybrid financing. In the last video, we have discussed preferred shares and leasing. For this video, we're going to have warrants and convertibles. What is a warrant? A warrant is a long-term option issued by a company that gives the holder the right to buy a stated number of shares of common stock at a specified price called the exercise price within a specified period. Warrants are typically attached to bonds as sweeteners. What does this mean? Because of this added feature of having warrants in bonds, issuer of bonds can bargain for a lower coupon interest rate with the investors. The investors would allow a lower rate considering the added feature which is advantageous to them. That is, they would have the right to purchase common stocks as a result of buying the bond. Some warrants are detachable. A detachable warrant is a warrant that can be sold on its own by detaching it from the bond. That is, it can be independently sold. It is also possible for the exercise price of a warrant to be step up. A step up exercise price is an exercise price that is specified to rise if a warrant is not exercised before a specified date. Say for example, the exercise price is originally 10, which could rise to 15. If the stock is currently sold at 12 pesos, the investors would be pressured to exercise the warrants before the exercise price goes up. Let us go to the following illustration to show how to calculate the implied value of a warrant. Flashlight Corporation recently issued two kinds of bonds. The first issue is a 20-year bond without warrants with a 7% annual coupon. The second issue is a 20-year bond with a 5% annual coupon with 20 warrants attached to each. Both issues were sold at the par value of 1,000 pesos. What is the value of each warrant? Let us begin by dealing with the straight bonds, that is, the bonds without the warrant. Accordingly, the straight bond has a par value of 1,000 pesos. We can assume that the market value is also 1,000 pesos, considering the fact that it is issued at par. As for the coupon rate, it is 7%. Now for the market interest rate, or yield to maturity of this security, we can say that it is also 7% considering the market value is equal to the par value. Let us arrive at the value of this bond. Obviously, it is 1,000 pesos, as evident by the fact that it is issued at 1,000 pesos, the par value. As a result, we can say that the coupon rate of 7% is also equal to the yield to maturity rate of 7%. To test whether this is true, let us do this calculation. Take 7% of 1,000, that is 70. Multiply it by the present value of ordinary annuity, 7%, for 20 years. You have 741.58. As for the 1,000 par value, which will be returned at the maturity period of 20 years. We are to multiply this by the present value of a lump sum, 7% 20 years. As we can see, the market value is indeed 1,000 pesos. Now, it is easy to calculate the value of the bond assuming it has no warrants. 
that is, it is a straight bond. Let us now proceed to the bond with warrants. Accordingly, the par value is also 1,000. The coupon rate, this is only 5%, which is expected considering that this band has an added warrant, making it more attractive for the investors. But remember that our yield to maturity for this company should be around 7%. So the value of the bond per se is not supposed to be 1,000. However, with the warrants with it, it can be issued at 1,000. How are we going to have the breakdown of this 1,000 pesos market value with the bond component and the warrant component? Let us start with the bond component. You have a coupon of 5% of 1,000. That's 50. We're going to multiply by the same present value of ordinary annuity. And the par value of 1,000 by the same present value of a lump sum. we are going to have the following bond value. Thus, the bond portion of our 1,000 market value is said to be 788.12. If the total value of the bond together with the warrant is 1,000, the difference must be pertaining to the warrant, which is 211.12. 88 pesos. Now, since there are 20 warrants attached to each bond, we just divide this by 20, and there you go. We have the warrant to be valued at 10.59 pesos. In summary, what we need to do basically is to know the value of a typical straight bond of the same company. Then calculate independently the value of the bond with warrants, considering it has a lower coupon. Obviously, it has a lower value. Then the differential would pertain to the value of the warrants. Now, why issue warrants? Warrants allows bonds to be issued at a lower coupon. Again, considering this is another benefit that can be exercised by the investors, Investors are willing to take the bond at a lower coupon interest. Second, it brings new funds when the company needs this. Warrant holders typically exercise the warrants when the stock price is high. This usually happens when the company is expected to have good growth prospects. So in times when business is growing, the warrant holders would be incentivize to exercise these warrants because of the expected higher stock price as a result of the growth. This is in turn favorable to the issuer considering that the issuer needs money when the company is growing. However, it does not always work as expected. Investors usually exercise the warrants when the stock price is high. In that case, the issuer would need more sources of funding but in the periods where the stock price is unexpectedly going down both the investor and the issuer would lose considering that the investor will have no use of the warrants and the issuer will not have the necessary funding next let us proceed to convertibles what is a convertible bond or convertible preferred stock it is typically a bond or a preferred stock that can be exchanged for the common stock of the issuing company at the option of the holder. Note, it does not bring new funds to the company. It just allows substitution of debt or preferred stocks for common equity. Some of the important terms that we need to know about convertibles. We have the conversion price. This is the effective price paid for a common stock obtained by converting a convertible. This is calculated as par divided by the shares obtained. 
we also have the conversion ratio. This is the number of common shares obtained by converting a convertible to common equity. To illustrate the importance of this, let's refer to the next sample case. Headlight Corporation recently issued convertible bonds with a 1,000 par value. The bond has a conversion ratio of 20. What is the conversion price? Again, to arrive at the conversion price, all we need to do is to simply divide the par value by the conversion ratio. We have 1,000 divided by 20. You have a conversion price of 50 pesos. What does it mean? It is as if when we are going to convert the bond to common equity, we are going to have 20 common shares. And therefore, distributing the par value among the 20 shares, it is as if the price of one stock is 50 pesos when exercised. Another important terminology that we need to be aware of is the conversion value. The conversion value is the value of a common stock obtained by converting a convertible. In the previous problem, what is the conversion value of headlights bonds if the stock price is 15? Considering that we have a conversion ratio of 20, if each share of stock is valued at 15, then we would have a conversion value of 300 pesos. Important notes on the valuation of convertibles. A convertible bond's market price cannot fall below its conversion value nor its straight debt value. It should be higher than those two values considering the convertibles have added features. Why would we use convertibles? Well, first, it allows bonds to be issued at a lower coupon. Similar to warrants, the convertible feature will make it more attractive for the investors that they would be willing to take it even though they are issued at a lower coupon. Second, in essence, it is as if it allows common stocks to be sold at higher prices. This typically happens when the common stocks are undervalued. When the common stocks are undervalued, the company can alternatively issue a convertible bond or preferred stocks with a conversion price that is high. So when the market would realize the full value of the stock, they would be willing to convert it. And thus, they are issued at the intended stock price, in essence. So these are the types of hybrid financing. To enumerate, we have preferred stocks, leases, warrants, and convertibles. And that concludes our discussion on this topic. Like, share, and subscribe.